everybody! Today I'm here with my kind of late May wrap up, but we're here, so it's all good. If I seem like sweaty <laughs> and um, all over the place, it's because I'm on a filming marathon and this is my third video that I'm filming, so it's uh, it's been a busy afternoon. I read nine books in May and they were it was a super solid month. Um, coming off of reading 17 books in April, I knew that I needed to like slow down and give myself, you know, more time and it just naturally kind of happens. You naturally feel like reading a little bit less. The first thing I read was Mostly Dead Things by Kristen Arnett. I love this cover. The whole design of this book is just like chef's kiss. It's just so mmm, mmm, delish. So this is a book about a young woman named Jessa Lynn and she runs a taxidermy shop with her dad and one day she goes into work and finds that he has um, killed himself in the shop and she's left to kind of pick up the pieces of her family and also um, continue running this taxidermy shop. Um, she has a brother. His wife left him with the children like she just ditched and his wife was a longtime lover of Jessa Lynn. Jessa Lynn and Bryn were best friends growing up and Milo, which <laughs> I love the name Milo, it's so fun. Um, Milo was her brother and uh, Jessa Lynn and Bryn were always kind of ha had a little thing going on but Bryn wanted to like live out this um, straight cis nuclear family thing so she got together with Jessa Lynn's brother Milo. Um, but Bryn and Jessa Lynn still continued their affair throughout um, their marriage. Um, and then Bryn just kind of pieces out one day and ditches. So they're already quite a fractured group of people dealing with the abandonment of this woman that they both the siblings loved and these children that have been abandoned by their mother. And then on top of that, their father, um, like Jessa Lynn and Milo's father, killing himself. And obviously their mother is having a really tough time dealing with it and she's doing weird things like um, dressing up the window displays of the shop to be like very sexualized um, arrangements of these taxidermy animals. We really get a lot of flashbacks to her, to them when they were all kids and her and Bryn's um, relationship and then we're also dealing with like present day stuff. And it's really one of those like slice of life like it's just kind of a character study of all these different people there's not like any big plot but it's just you know like following this family during these times and I picked this up because of Iris Messenger I've been meaning to read it for a long time and um, yeah it was really quite something I'm really interested to read more by Kristen Arnett she has a new book with teeth that just came out which I'm super interested in picking up because um, this was definitely unlike anything else I've ever read. Quite the read. I give it four stars. <laughs> Next thing I read was three books in a series, so maybe I'll kind of talk about them together-ish. Um, but it was the th second, third, and fourth books in the Bone Season series by Samantha Shannon. I originally read the first and second books way back when they came out, and then I never kept up with the series because there's quite a bit, quite a gap between when the books come out, two to four years. I reread the Bone Season in April, and... I enjoyed it, but definitely upon reading the rest of the series, it's not my favorite. Um, but the series is so good. It follows a clairvoyant named Paige Mahoney in the near future, like 2050 or something, um, in London. And clairvoyance is illegal, and she gets into some trouble. She ends up basically in this prison for clairvoyance, where she finds out that there are these, um, like, immortal ethereal beings from other dimensions named the Rephaim who are capturing clairvoyants and using them to feed on their auras and to also make the clairvoyants fight against these like alien predator monsters that come in from other dimensions called the Emim. And so it's a whole thing. There's a lot going on in this series and I love it. Like I am a true fan now that I've caught up on the series, a true fan. So I give them my order a five stars, which originally I think I had given the Bone Season five stars and the Mime Order four stars when I read them originally. Now I've swapped my ratings. This is now a five star. And the Bone Season was more of a four star for me. I'm really comparing them against each other. But I love the Mime Order. It's my second favorite one in the series. 
Then we have The Song Rising, which is the third book, which is quite a bit shorter, and then they did a weird cover change, and then thank god they changed it back, because this is just not as cute. This one, it almost felt fillery, like it was usually really long and meandery. There was like a long section of time where they're just traveling around, hiding out. Um, and then the like last third of this book was like crazy, like a lot of stuff that really set up for the rest of the series happened to the main character, and just in general, a lot going on. Um, so I gave this one four stars as well. And then my favorite of the series is The Mask Falling. This is the fourth book. Five million stars. I love this book so much. Like, this book just really gave us what we needed this far into the series. We needed that first few chapters of just Paige and Warden just chilling, hiding out in an apartment, hanging out, getting to know each other and just having like that quiet like time. It was so lovely. And then the rest of the book is like wild, crazy action. But I just, I love this series so much. And I, I can't believe that I'm gonna have to wait like two or four years for the fifth book. Like Samantha. I follow her on social media and she's posting about how she's writing way faster than she used to. And she's right now writing the fifth book in the series. So I'm like, please. Please, don't make us wait four years. I don't know how people did it. But then, I had a little theme where I read a couple of pandemic books this month. Um, just sort of happened. Um, but I read uh, Songs for the End of the World by Selima Nawaz. The pandemic breaks out that's just very similar to the coronavirus. And actually this book, it was published in 2020, but she says that she wrote it between 2013 and 2019. But it's very similar to the coronavirus. Like, the book is uh, in a way. But I don't really consider it like a super pandemic -y book. Like we're following lots of different characters over all these different times and it's kind of just slices their life. We're following different guys that their wife left them because they're a lesbian and we're following another guy that's just a cheating asshole and um, his wife leaves him and we're following uh, a woman who grew up on a sailboat and now is a rock star. Like we're following just lots of random characters in their little slice of life and some of them intersect, some of them intertwine, like the stories. But I just... I didn't understand the point of this book and I didn't feel like it was really a pandemic book like there wasn't many themes of an actual pandemic in it so I don't know I feel weird about this one um and I gave it two stars and I read They Never Learn by Lane Fargo which is a thriller type book about a professor named Scarlett who is um on the side of being a professor she's murdering men and we love to see it. She basically moves around, but she's at this one university now. And every year or two, she seeks out, like she pays attention, she seeks out these different horrible, disgusting men and she murders them and she makes it look like suicides, accidents. It also has like dual timelines. So we follow a uh, character in a different timeline going to the university, like as a student. Um, so we have that dynamic. Scarlet, she's also um, bisexual. I think and um, yeah it's just it's a really solid thriller I really enjoyed it I want to get a physical copy of this book I read it because I think books and Lala it was books and Lala's book club pick for um, May and so I'm really excited they still haven't had the live show yet I'm really excited to see what they thought of it because I really enjoyed it and I gave it uh, four stars then I read another pandemic book Severance by Ling Ma. I enjoyed this one a lot more than <laughs> Songs for the End of the World. So this one follows a main character named Candace, and she works in New York at a publishing house in the Bible department, and a pandemic breaks out, and like she doesn't really have anything else going for her in life, she doesn't have mm, any family left, so she just keeps going to work, and keeps going to work, and keeps going to work, until all of a sudden, she realizes that there's no one else left in New York City. And she ventures out to try and find other survivors. This pandemic, this illness, basically like zombifies people but not in the flesh eating way. It just kind of makes them like turn into like zombies that are just wandering around and like monotonously doing tasks over and over and over again until they die of like starvation and stuff. Like it's very weird but it was super interesting and I know people talk about how like they're confused when they hear about this book because it's supposed to be like a, a pandemic book and like a kind of an office th office life book and that's it really is and it's really so unique i gave it four stars then i read counting down with you by tashi buyan tashi buyan is one of those like gen z young authors that is coming out with debuts and you know 
in like 2020, 2021, and 2022. There's like a group of them. And so I was interested to read her book because I just love following all those girls and I think it, they're so amazing that they're all publishing novels and they're like in their early 20s. And so even though I'm not a big YA contemporary fan, I picked this one up. It's about a girl named Karina and she is from a strict kind of conservative Bangladeshi family. Um, and her parents go away to Bangladesh for a month and, Lee, and the grandmother comes to stay with um, Karina and her brother um, while their parents are away and she has such a wonderful relationship with her grandmother and grandmother's way less strict and Karina starts tutoring the like school bad boy named Ace and they kind of start a fake dating thing that turns into a real romance and she's able to like live this kind of like fantasy and, th and then her parents get home after 28 days. It's a fun little thriller, very YA. I think this would work great for like younger teenage kids, like 14, 15, 16 year olds, I think would love this book. Um, like I said, I'm not the biggest young adult contemporary reader, so I already knew going into it that it could be not really my thing. I found it cute, but like not something that I would seek out really. Like it's not something I seek out, but I did wanna um, read Tashi Buyan and support her because I think it's just so amazing all these young like 20 year olds that are publishing books. So I gave this one 2.5 stars um, but I'm really interested to see what she writes in the future because I think she's writing, I follow them all on like Twitter and stuff and I think she's writing a book right now which is about inspired by the time Tom Holland was undercover at her school. So there's that. Alright the last book that I read was another reread. I had two rereads this month. Woo. The Son of Neptune by Rick Riordan. I'm still going through my Rick Riordan reread, so this was the next one on the docket. Um, see, the second book in the Heroes of Olympus, and I enjoyed it. I, I will say, like, I think I said this in my April wrap-up, I just, I don't love this series quite as much as the Percy Jackson series, but I think especially after we get the first two books in the series out of the way, it just becomes a lot more fun because all the characters are back together again, because everyone's very separated in the first and second book. It's a fun time, so rereading that, that's it. That's all the books that I read in May. Couldn't remember the month. If you got to the end of this video, thank you so much. How about leave a skull? Leave a skull or something in the as an emoji in the comments if you rated all the way to the end for the Bone Season series. I hope that everyone's having a great reading month in June. And um, I will see you guys again soon. Happy reading. Bye-bye.